What's up, everybody? Jared Sandler here with you for our spring training update for Tuesday, March 9th. Uh, unfortunately, some not great news. Jonathan Hernandez suffered a low-grade UCL sprain. He's going to be shut down from throwing for four weeks. He'll be reevaluated at that point. Best case, he's not an option at the big league level for at least two months. We'll get into that more in a second. First, one of the things that really interests me about roster building when you've got a young team or a desire to go young like the Rangers is balancing that desire with the need and the importance of a veteran presence. And if you look at the Rangers lineup from a position player standpoint, it's going to be very young, whether by age or experience, Joey Gallo, Rugnet Odor uh, are the two most veteran of the, the young guys. And you know, at, at no fault of Rugies, I don't know that, you know, he is looked upon as a clubhouse leader. And while Joey, I think has certain personality traits, you know, he's not the, you know, the going to be the, the, the commander of the ship. Uh, so with guys like Brock Holt and Charlie Colberson, you know, how much uh, importance does that play on top of whatever they can give you? Does it, you know, maybe take on more importance. And, and the reason I bring that up, I, I remember talking with someone, and I've, I've mentioned this on 105 Through the Fan, if you've heard me bring up this example. The Philadelphia 76ers, the beginning of the Trust the Process era, eight, 10 years ago, when they went super young, they stripped the team of any talent. They were just trying to load up on picks for a few years, and they got some of those picks. I mean, they had some talented players. One of the problems, if you ask people within those walls, was that their roster was only young. They didn't have a quality veteran to help guide them, to help cultivate good habits, to help uh, develop uh, and, and, and promote the philosophies that were being preached. Because you have young guys who are just trying to find their own way, and they end up going in a lot of different ways. And it wasn't until they started adding some veteran presence to the roster that they really started to grow and become a, a good team in the East. And I know that's a different sport, but I think a lot of the, the – the tenants of that apply in any sport, any, any group or team setting. And one of the things I asked Chris Woodward today was, do you have to have a veteran presence in the everyday lineup for their impact as a veteran to really take form? Or can that veteran be a guy off the bench? And what I had in mind was at third base, Brock Holt or Charlie Culberson looks like Brock Holt, maybe would be the front runner to be the starting third baseman out of those two. Andy Ibanez, Rugnet Odor. They're obviously uh, apples and oranges, Ibanez and Odor, different scenarios, different circumstances, but both are young guys who uh, wouldn't provide that, that veteran presence. If one of those two guys ends up as the starter, and I'd say right now that Rugi's probably ahead of Ibanez, but Ibanez you know, presents a, an interesting scenario, and Brock Holt and Charlie Colberson or Charlie Colberson are on the bench, can they still provide that desired veteran presence and, and have that impact uh, as non-everyday players? And not that Woody knows for sure. I mean, every case is different, but in his opinion, which is obviously important, he believes that, yes, that's the case, that, that though they can still have that type of an impact if they're not playing. Because a lot of what they're doing, a lot of where they're impacting people is outside of the three, three and a half hours of game time anyway. So. I thought it was interesting, and I think that's something worth following, especially when it comes to third base. All right, Jonathan Hernandez. Uh, not good news. You know, Matt Hicks and I were talking about it earlier, and Hicksy shared with me a line from former Rangers pitching coach Mike Maddox, who I guess at one point said there are two types of pitchers, those who have had Tommy John and those who, have, uh, who will have Tommy John. Uh, I think the Rangers are hoping that Jonathan Hernandez remains in the latter category and maybe – uh, creates a third category, which pitchers exist in, which is pitchers who never have Tommy John. Uh, the Rangers are not sure one way or the other. Obviously, anything with the UCL is not encouraging, but because it is a low-grade sprain, the hope is that with some rest, he'll be okay to proceed without Tommy John. Uh, obviously, that possibility exists, and the Rangers will reevaluate in four weeks, something worth monitoring. Um, you know, Thank gosh, again, while the recovery is, is not short and not easy, the technology is such that guys are able to recover and, uh, you know, come back at, at full strength uh, much better, much, much more frequently than they were 10, 20, 30 years ago. This does create an issue in the bullpen, which was seen as a strength. Uh, Jonathan Hernandez was going to be not only a dominant back end guy, but, you know, a guy who could maybe get you more than three outs. And 
it's unlikely that the Rangers is going to be able to just find one guy to, to fill that role the way he was able to fill that. What it does do is create an opportunity in the bullpen. An extra spot now is going to be available that otherwise wasn't. Uh, does that mean Matt Bush has a better shot? Matt Bush pitched today, looked sharp. One of the things he talked to Chris Woodward about is that over the last two years, when he hasn't pitched, he's learned to become a better pitcher and not just a thrower. You know, that, that sounds nice. Now, Matt Bush, probably not a multi-inning option. Josh Spores is a multi-inning option. Guy the Rangers acquired uh, from the Dodgers uh, in February. He pitched today. He's, you know, he's looked sharp. Uh, and, and it doesn't have to be only one of the guys on this list, but these are the names who I think, uh, you know, could benefit. Brett DeGus, you know, create an extra avenue for their Rule 5 acquisition to, to be on the roster, at least to start the season. And then the name that is really interesting to me is Ian Kennedy. Kennedy is a guy who could give you multiple innings. He is not far removed from being a starter. Uh, I'm sure he would thrive in a one inning role, but he is someone who could give you more than three outs. Does this make a path for Ian Kennedy more clear? Those are things that are worth monitoring. And I think those are some of the responses that the Rangers might uh, uh, provide from a roster building standpoint with the news of Jonathan Hernandez's absence, at least for the first two months and possibly more from a trade standpoint. I don't think the Rangers were going to trade Jonathan Hernandez this year, especially with how much control they have of him. I think they believe they'll compete within his window. So, you know, I, I think it makes it less likely that they're going to trade him obviously now, but I don't know that he was definitely going to get traded uh, this, this year. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know that, um, you know, there's certain guys who are like, yeah, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when I wouldn't put Jonathan Hernandez in that category. It could happen, but I don't think it's a, uh, just a matter of when type of scenario. All right, tomorrow, one of the things we'll do is we'll go through some either ors, uh, some roster battles where I believe, and it's not necessarily guys who play the same position, but it's either going to be that guy or this guy on the roster. That's uh, one of the things we'll discuss tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.